Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free. Not long ago, I did my very first live stream here on this YouTube channel, and what we did was built this mechanical keyboard. So I spent a couple hours um, live. I think I pretty much did the whole keyboard uh, live in the live stream. This is the Corn keyboard, and so I thought I'd do a, uh, a video just talking, showing how it turned out first of all, and talking about this keyboard and, and why I built it and sort of some of the. It's kind of a unique keyboard. It's a split keyboard. Um, anyway, I want to talk about this this keyboard and just uh, go through a little bit of the build process. Um, so if you're new to this channel, first of all, um, I'm Rindon. On this channel, we talk about free and open source software. A lot of that has to do with um, graphic design software and music software and video creation software, uh, but it doesn't have to be. So in the case of this keyboard, uh, this is running open source software as well, open source firmware. It's called QMK, and it's a, a unique kind of firmware or software that interprets the key presses on the keyboard, and then you can program it. So you can have, you notice this only has very few keys compared to a traditional keyboard. So you can hold down a certain key and have some uh, some like key macros or some, some hot keys on here so that when you hold down a certain key or a key combination, it changes the layout of the keyboard. That's all accomplished through this open source uh, firmware QMK. Um, a lot of keyboards, like this one here, I believe supports, maybe not, but some keyboards you get, a lot of mechanical keyboards will let you um, put QMK onto there. And all these, uh, the custom keyboards, I built a couple of these, um, almost all of them feature the, um, they use QMK. Um, but in addition to that, this is also an open source hardware build. So the designer of this, which is Fustan, uh, it's a, I think it's a Japanese designer or it came out of Japan. Uh, this was designed and open sourced, given to the community. So the hardware plans for the circuit board, uh, all the components needed and how they go together and how to get the software onto it is all open source. The whole process is not proprietary. You can build these. Um, I believe you could even, you, I think you can build them and sell them. You can sell the finished hardware, but if you want to, it's not secret how it was built. A lot of people these days, a lot of companies, they like to, to develop a product and then keep it secret and hidden. And they don't want to tell you how it's made because then they're afraid you'll go out and make it and you won't buy their product. Um, so I really appreciate people that uh, create things and give it into the commons, into the community with a very free and open source um, license. And that's ultimately why I chose to build this keyboard. And like I said, I built a few, uh, I built the Atrius keyboard first. I have a video of, of that here on this channel. I'm just finishing building the Ergodox keyboard right now. Uh, I did one called the Gherkin, which is a very small only has 30 keys. So this one has 42 keys. Um, I used, the switch I used on this is a Gatoron. So these mechanical keyboards, they have a different type of switch, a mechanical switch. And this is a Gatoron, like milky yellow switch. It's a linear switch, so it doesn't make a clicky sound when you press it down. And it gives it this kind of sound. The keycaps I'm using don't have any uh, writing on them. Uh, and what I actually had to do, hold on a sec. Okay, sorry about that, I had to take a phone call, and now the sun has moved, and so I had to reposition the camera a little bit. But I was talking about these keycaps, and since I'm using a blank keycap, uh, but I like the, the, this indentation or these, uh, these bumps that are on the, well, what is it, the F and J key, if you're using the QWERTY layout. Um, since these were just completely blank and they didn't have that detent, and I wanted to fill that, what I did is I took a drill and I actually drilled in to the keycap and I put a little, tiny little BB from a 12 gauge shotgun um, bird shot is what I, I cut open a shotgun shell and I drilled a hole and then I glued, I kind of wedged it in there and then glued it in place. And so that's what these are these on these keys. Um, and then also I'm not using the, uh, the QWERTY layout, I'm using what's called Colmac. And so with Colmac, it rearranges the keys so that your fingers stay on this home row much more. Like all the vowels are over here, um, you have like E, I, O, uh, and then, you know, A, and so all the vowels are on the home row, and um, just the, the letters you use most often when typing English are very centered around there. So there's a couple different, you may maybe have heard of Dvorak is another common one, um, and the, the reasoning kind of goes that back in the day they kind of spaced out the commonly pressed uh, letters so that you, so that they'd be far apart because typewriters would jam if the if commonly used letters were next to each other, but it, it, it's kind of bad for your wrists and it makes it so you can't type as fast. And so I recently just switched over to this uh, Colmac, and I'll include a link to the, the the video I'm using. In fact, let's hop over now to the. I'll show you just a video of typing in Colmac, um, so you can hear 
what this keyboard sounds like um, when typing. So that should give you an idea of what this keyboard kind of looks like and sounds like up close uh, while typing. But I'm really glad I chose to learn Colmec. Uh, I've been doing it for about two months now and I use that uh, Colmec Academy. I'll include a link to that, that website as well. But it's been really good for training. It doesn't have a lot of ads um, like a lot of other, uh, a lot of other uh, training websites have. And it's also kind of focused on Colmec and then it has other ones too you can choose from a drop down. But, uh, yeah, the cost on this keyboard, I was just going to mention quickly, $25 for the kit, uh, and then another $25 roughly for the case that I went with. Uh, you can get more expensive cases. Uh, and then f that doesn't include the keycaps, and then also the switches. So with keycap switches, that's m maybe another $30 or so, depending on which ones you go with. You can do a little bit cheaper or obviously more expensive. Um, so you're looking at maybe $80 to build this keyboard, which is a pretty good price for a, a, a mechanical keyboard. One of the cheaper, really. Um, I'm building an ErgoDox right now, and I think it's definitely over $100. If you buy the ErgoDox already built, it's like $300 or more. So these mechanical keyboards can be expensive, but building it yourself um, is just a lot of fun, even if it costs more, which it usually does, um, than buying a, a pre-built like off the shelf. This is like a mechanical keyboard that you can just buy off the shelf. But uh, I think building your own keyboard is kind of fun and it can put you more in control. And then plus if your keyboard breaks, you know exactly how to fix it. And then you can program it to be whatever you want uh, or behave however you want. So anyway, I think I'll end this video now, but thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments about mechanical keyboards or about the corn keyboard uh, specifically, please leave them below. And I look forward to catching you in the next video.